Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Once again, trying to make sense of this crazy Arizona market. I thought I'd jump on and go over where the market is today, seeing a lot of videos out there. And uh, uh, my realtor friend, Caitlin, put one out and said I was wrong. Um, the market's slower than what we thought it was going to be. <clears throat> what kills me, and she's right, um, what kills me is the negative comments to start showing, ah, oh, you guys need to get a second job now, you're gonna starve. You know, look, we don't pile on your careers, stop piling on ours. <laughs> I know you don't want us to succeed, I get it. But uh, some of us are doing quite well, folks. Um, the market's not as bad as it looks, it's slow. And let me show you why. And first thing, is, this is the big reason right here, 7.11 mortgage rates have crept back up. Now, housing prices have increased that didn't help the CPI numbers. So, you know, there's no way that you can expect a rate cut coming uh, next month. I think this was kind of a given anyway. Um, there were a lot of people that just based on the comments by the central banks thought four to six rates are coming and social media was just flooded with this nonsense that we were gonna have all these rate cuts and we'd be down to 5.5% and you need to hurry. And if you've watched any of my videos, I've said, mm, sit tight. I don't know if that's going to happen. I've never liked marry the house, date the rate. I just thought that was a cheap slogan put out by somebody. I don't know if it was title companies or lenders or real estate agents. Regardless, I just thought it was kind of cheesy. Having said that, let's take a look at what's going on, though, because one of the other comments that I see a lot is, you don't understand just how bad credit is out there for everybody. Well, I think I do kind of understand. I don't pull credit reports every day, but... I look at the average FICO score last year was the highest it's ever been. Now, Q1 of this year may see have seen some slide, but they're going to be sliding from a peak of 715. And what that tells you is overall, the majority of people in the United States are well positioned with their credit. There are people that are in tough shape. And most people in the automobile industry are seeing that. People are going and trying to buy a car um, and their, their credit is terrible. Um, they're not going out trying to buy a house. Were they going to buy a house at any time anyway? Who knows? I don't know who your customers are that are coming in to purchase cars, but I'm sure you're seeing some very low credit scores. But my only point is we're not feeling it here. We are seeing some of that, but not at the scale that's being implied. The other thing we're seeing too is we're seeing that Pending listings under contract are below last year. Not by an alarming number. I know Caitlin shared this number the other day too. And we're sitting here at uh, a little above 8,000 last year. We were a little below 9,000. So it hasn't spiked above last year, I guess is the point of this chart. And the commentary says, you know, we're just kind of in a holding pattern. We don't know where this is going to go. Active listings have gone up, but where are they going to go? They really ran up when interest rates spiked and everybody thought, well, let's grab our equity as fast as we can. Let's go, let's go. And it didn't work. So we had the largest number of expired listings ever. Everybody said, understand, they're sitting there going, I've got $200,000, $300,000 in equity. I'm going to grab it now because the real estate market's going to crash. We flooded the market to almost 20,000 homes right here. Well, <clears throat> they didn't sell. And so because pe people priced them too high, they were convinced based on their Zestimate from Zillow that they had this big cash cow in front of them and it didn't work, so they got out. So I don't see a repeat of that this year. Lessons learned, but we are going up. We always go up in January and February. Where it goes from here is anybody's guess because you can see we've gone down, 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 down every other year except for this anomaly here in 2022. So where this shakes out, we just have to watch. 15,190 uh, is a healthy number, but it's not a high number. <clears throat> In comparison, before our huge population growth, the normal was about 27,000 homes. I say that because with our huge population explosion, the normal might be 30 to 35,000, but we don't really know. When was the last time we saw normal in this market? Are they getting their list price? Well, they are. 292. For the asking price, and two dollars and eighty-eight, two dollars, yeah, two dollars and eighty-eight, two hundred and eighty-eight dollars, eighty-six dollars and ninety cents, is what they're getting. So they're getting close to their list price, which, if you look at it on a chart, um, <clears throat> it shows it at ninety-seven percent. 
if we compare it historically, uh, not alarming. The inventory number that we have out here, we're seeing here that we're at about a three-month supply, 76.9 days, so 30 days, 60, yeah, two-and-a-half months supply. Not an alarming number when you look at it. And if you compare it to the norms, okay, that's not where you have a problem. Now, these numbers here, 120 days, that's, you know, three months. We used to say that three to four months was normal or four to six months was normal. We just haven't seen that in a long time. This was the silly season. This was when the frenzied market was right down there. And that's when we had all these bidding wars. So what are we seeing today? Well, it's slow. It's really slow. But I think it's good slow. It's good slow, meaning that buyers can look because there's more choices. They can take their time. They can go home and discuss whether or not they want to purchase a home, sit at the kitchen table, crunch some numbers. Weren't able to do that a couple of years ago. Sellers, it's not desperate times. If you're priced correctly, your home is actually, it's actually selling. We have a sell to um, the, the number of new listings coming on versus the number of new listings that are going under contract is still hovering about 80%. When you saw that big dip that we saw in 2022, that number got down to 60%. In other words, only 60% of the homes coming on the market were lucky enough to see an active contract. Now it's about 80%. So while both numbers are lower, um, active contracts have actually gone up. We're almost, we're knocking on, 3,000 a week. We're about 2,900 right now. Uh, that's, that's not too bad. Uh, if you look back at other years, so let's say back in 2021, we were getting 3,900 to 4,200 new listings on a seven day average. And we were knocking them out at about 4,200 a week. So we were putting more homes under contract than were coming on. So every week the inventory went doom, 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 doom. One week, we only had 4,800 homes on the market. So I'm glad that we're not there. Now, the central bank, when are they going to lower rates? Who knows? The bond traders kind of got ahead of their skis and said, well, um, they, they sounded very optimistic the last time they spoke. And uh, so some of the people in the dot plot said we're going to go out four to six more rate cuts. And even though the Fed chairman says, well, you know, we're going to look and see what to do in March. Um, so far, we like where things are trending, but there's still some things we want to watch. We're going to be in this for higher and longer and we're experiencing that because we don't really believe him right when he says we're going to stay here now the bond market reacts and sets uh, mortgage rates as through their purchases of treasuries and so they've pulled back now and said nah, it looks like march cuts not coming remember they always price ahead so they've priced ahead and now they're readjusting going i don't see it and we're going to have that meeting we all know now they're not going to say well things are great we're going to go down because well, CPI went up, PPI went up. So it's not, it's heading sort of in the direction, but um, I have felt that the inflation numbers are not going to be as rosy as people anticipated only because I saw the rate of said federal spending in Q3 of last year spike. Well, whenever you throw more money out there, you've got too much money chasing too few goods. You have inflation. Are we going to see 2%? Not anytime soon. Now, the central bank could say if they really wanted to ignite housing a little bit or keep it from falling off the cliff which honestly i don't think they pay that much attention to housing um, but they could do what's called fed speak and just say you know what uh, while the numbers didn't look good last month we still think we're on target for some reductions moving forward the bond market would react and you'd be back down to 6.5 sooner rather than later they also while the chairman says, you know, they, there's not a lot they can do about housing. What he meant by that was the number one driver for prices of housing is availability, and we just don't have the availability. And what he said is there's nothing we can do about that from here. Now, they can influence the pace of sales with interest rates going up and down, but that's not their job. Their job is to keep the dollar sound and maximize employment. Right now, they're trying to maximize more people not being employed so that that'll help with inflation. And it's not going the way that they thought it would. So that's why we're seeing these reactions. Now, Pat, you know who I have on the show, he has said that we're going to be in the doldrums for a while. And it's actually better from his end because when something's slow, at least it's steady, you can plan on it. 
you can look ahead, you can make sound decisions. When it's going up and down like a yo-yo, you don't know whether or not you're going to lock, you're going to wait. It's really tough to try and get somebody a decent rate, decent mortgage rate. So slow and steady is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I'm not collecting unemployment checks. I'm not uh, getting food stamps. It's not that bad. <laughs> I know some of you hope I do. Look, the real estate industry, yes, it's commission-based. Uh, the average realtor maybe the average nationally sells maybe three homes a year so they're not all knocking it out of the park uh, there are some that are struggling heavily i see a lot of lock boxes for sale on uh, facebook marketplace and craigslist and everything just people getting out of the industry that happens it's a natural thing so slower for longer for me is going to work i think that gives us more hope that maybe we'll start approaching some affordability without the dreaded crash word I'm not seeing anything out there in real estate that is foreboding of a crash. I'm seeing problems in commercial real estate right now, putting some strains on banks. But in the Phoenix area, um, we're seeing a lot of new development coming for warehouses, shipping centers, businesses. Uh, so we're not seeing that slowdown. Uh, in fact, Grant Cardone, uh, who's a real estate investor, he's urging people to pull out of New York and come to Arizona because of the recent ruling. So um, it's not all doom and gloom, folks, uh, but it's just slow. And let's embrace slow and have fun with it. If you have any questions, shoot me an email, rick, rickhelps.com.